In this video, I want to dive into the investigative techniques of television's Lieutenant Columbo. Are they practical in real life? And what detective skills of his can you add to your repertoire? That's next. Lieutenant Columbo was a fictional LAPD homicide detective. His TV show was prolific. It aired from the early 70s all the way to the early 2000s. And what was great about the show was Columbo the character. Everything else revolved around him. Instead of the classic whodunit type of case where the viewer, us, is always wondering who the killer is, Columbo in his TV show is the only one who doesn't. We, the viewer, do. It's called a How Catch Him, and that's why we love Columbo, because we get to watch as he puts the pieces together and inevitably solves the caper. Now, his character is fantastic. His classic move is to play the fool all along. His friendly demeanor, gruff exterior, complete with wrinkled raincoat, chewed up cigar, uneven tie, coupled with his circuitous train of thought, takes his suspects off guard. Many times, he simply gets his suspects to share all the details of their crimes without them even being aware of it. Sometimes he just annoys people to death with his questions. And all the while, he's been deducing who the actual criminal is from the get-go. And then he ambushes his targets with his hidden powers of observation and deduction. Pure genius. <laughs> Before we get into how we can implement a few of his tactics, let's take a quick step back and look at the art of interrogation and interviewing. You might argue there are two generally accepted ways to interrogate someone. There is the confrontational way and a non-confrontational way. And when you think confrontational, think as the phrase suggests, being a little bit more aggressive, uh, getting face to face with your suspect, isolating them, using forceful mannerisms, and even lying to elicit a confession. You've probably seen this in classic good cop, bad cop movies, but it's not as intense as what you might have seen in that movie, The Dark Knight, where Batman is face to face with the Joker. Uh, you're not sticking him under a heat lamp or not punching him in the face like the movies. But if you watch the documentary Making a Murderer on Netflix, detectives employed classic confrontational techniques, the read technique to be specific. And the interrogation tactics employed got the confession out of Brendan Dassey. And despite this technique eliciting genuine confessions in countless homicide cases, in that documentary, the technique is actually used to potentially coerce the suspect in violating his constitutional rights. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, there are non-confrontational tactics, trainings like what Wicklander Zlowski offers, employing tactics like psychological or social engineering ploys to elicit a confession, not one under duress. Rather than being straightforward, this tactic arrives at the conclusion in a circular method, and it's a preferred method for loss prevention and non-law enforcement professionals. Non-confrontational tactics would be an example of what Columbo uses in detective work. His art of misdirection and ability to distract his suspects is key to his methodology. He doesn't carry a gun. He's an every man, a bit slow or inept. He's got the glass eye to go with it. He's crazy like a fox. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's the opposite of what we look to as a comic book style hero, and yet his methods work. He gets the suspect to confess at the end of each episode, and they many times willingly let Columbo slap the cuffs on them. Let's take a quick look at a classic ending scene where our suspect, you'll see him here in a second, thinks that he's in control and he thinks he's off the hook, but you'll see Columbo slowly unveil his caught him moment, leading to our suspect to go into full on oh crap mode. Let's check it out. I'd like an answer if you don't mind. Uh, well, I'd have to start with your uncle's will. What about it? Well, you see, he pulled the rug out from under you when he left his collection to Mrs. Matthews. So you uh, only had one thing that you could do. Murder him and blame it on her. He realizes what's about to happen here. I Denial. I realize the full import of what you're Anger. saying, Lieutenant. There are witnesses here. You see, under the law, anyone who criminally causes the death of someone else can't inherit from that person. Is that right, Mr. Simpson? That's correct. 
So if Mrs. Matthews is convicted, you're next in line. <laughs> Everything goes to you. That's why you planted the gun. And that's why you planted the wrapping paper. And that's why you planted these paintings. Teo. I can't believe it. Oh, but you'd like to, wouldn't you? Get you right off the hook. All right, Lieutenant. You claim that I planted these paintings? Suppose you prove it. He's and just been... Yeah. Yeah. Just been charged. With fingerprints. Uh -huh. Sorry to disappoint you, Lieutenant. Fingerprints won't help you at all. My fingerprints are all over those paintings. My uncle and I unwrapped them when they came back from the exhibit. I told you, didn't I? I told you myself. They're covered with my prints. Thought he no, cleaned up his mess. We're not looking for your prints. Oh. What? Do you remember the time that I was in your apartment and you mm. came in with some paintings? And you said that they were watercolors and you wanted to evaluate them? Great acting here. And remember, I wanted to <laughs> see them and you wouldn't let me? And I even touched them? Incredulous. Yes, my fingerprints are on those paintings. Now, if Mrs. Matthews is guilty, how could my fingerprints get on paintings that she stole? Got him. Uh, this Wait is entrapment. It. It's Wait a for setup, it. that's all. You, you, you touched those paintings just now while I wasn't looking. You saw sure him do that? it, didn't you? You put your prints on those paintings while you were bent over watching them when they were working on it. He touched them. You touched... You... you got him. <laughs> Great acting there. Great movie. So how can you employ non-confrontational tactics like this in your interviews or even when simply trying to obtain some information from a source? I think playing dumb is a great tactic. Easy for me to play that part, right? <laughs> but from my perspective, using the words, I don't know, can be valuable. If you're on the phone with someone and trying to track someone down, you might be honest and say, look, I'm a private investigator. I'm calling from Ohio. You're in California. I'm trying to locate someone and I don't know where they are. Your number came up as someone who might know. Can you help? You'd be surprised at how this simple technique works well. If they don't help, move on. But if they get hostile, your spidey senses will probably kick in and you'd have reason to be suspicious. Follow that trail. Columbo does this kind of stuff to extraordinary levels. His suspects often volunteer information simply because they want to help. Most people I've found do. So the next time you're out on the chase, add Columbo's tactics to your tool belt. Instead of going straight at the target, beat around the bush a little bit. Play the fool and let someone's good nature and need to talk come out. Oh, and just one more thing. If you want to know more about investigators like me, click on the videos in the next screen. Or if you want more tactics on how to be a better investigator, click the Reason You Got Burned series playlist on the next screen as well. Plenty of ways to up your game as an investigator. Till next time, I'll be watching you.